This video is sponsored by Classic Football Shirts, the best place to get your classic and vintage football shirts. To get cheap retro palace shirts, click the link in the description below. And for an extra 10% off, use the code CFSPJ10 at checkout. Hello and welcome to the E-Crystal Palace podcast. I'm Fonsal Greenville and in today's podcast, I'll be looking over the game against Leicester City by bringing you my match review player rankings and my man and match. As well as this, I'm also going to bring you interviews with Roy Hodgson, Christian Benteke and James McArthur after the game. So let's begin. Palace reached seven games unbeaten for the first time ever in their Premier League history with a superb victory at Leicester City, their first on the road this campaign. Christian Menteke ended a near eight-month wait for an Eagles away goal when he nodded Roy Hodgson's team into the lead, which was doubled five minutes before half-time by Wilfred Zaha to cap a fine first 45 minutes for the visitors. Excellent performances at both ends of the field meant Julian Spranley was rarely called upon throughout, with Leicester's resilience ending when Wilfred Ndidi was dismissed on the hour mark for a second bookable offence and Palace collected a 7 point in 7 days when Bakary Sacco netted a delicious third deep into stoppage time to claim a scoreline that didn't flatter the South Londoners. They were in sparkling form during the opening 45 minutes with their attacking play too hot for the host to handle. Just 5 minutes in, Geoffrey Slough, back in familiar surroundings having lifted a Premier League title at the Foxes, was soon making himself a home when he beat 3 defenders to weave into the box, but his cross come short just evaded Benteke and the far post. The bright start continued and some intricate build-up play between Benteke, Zaha and Ruben Loftus-Cheek created a chance for the England international. However, despite scuffing his effort, Kasper Schmeichel was still forced to parry it away, but on 19 minutes the Eagles' positivity was rewarded. The move began with Andros Townsend doing brilliantly under pressure on the right flank and finding Johan Kabai before the ball was returned to the winger's path. After taking the touch, he whipped in a delightful cross into the box that caught out the Foxes' defence and Benteke was on hand to drive it home with his head and end his lengthy search to get on the score sheet. He nearly repeated his trick two minutes later when he came inches away from netting an own goal when defending a lesser set piece, but his attempted clearance dropped marginally wide. But Hodgson's team's early dominance was evident as he took 33 minutes for Spironi to dirty his gloves, but Jamie Vardy's back heel flick was weak enough for the Palace stopper to simply pick up. Chances continued to come for the visitors and Zaha shot straight at Michael off the wriggling into the box but he would get the second goal that his side's fine play deserved in 39 minutes. Once again, Benteke was involved as he piled past Ndidi before slipping in Zaha, whose step over completely deceived Ben Chilwell, allowing the Ivorian international to fire his fourth goal of the campaign past Michael with composure. A two-goal lead at the break didn't flatter the Eagles who bossed proceedings, but it was nearly half four minutes after the restart. In typical fashion, Vardy made a nuisance of himself down the left flank and sent a ball out to Riyad Mahrez on the right who tricked his way past Slup before firing towards the far post, but Spironi produced an excellent save. It looked in further jeopardy on the hour mark when Claude Perel's team had a goal ruled out when Vincent Abora was quickly adjudged to have pushed James Tonkis in the back on his way to heading in a free kick. And 60 seconds later, Markin Ackerson made another bold call when he showed Ndidi a second yellow card for a dive in the area, which also looked to be the right decision. With a one-man and two-goal advantage, Palace were content just to sit back and look for counter-attacks, with Leicester unable to cause them any further concerns as Demele Gray curled a free kick over the bar before Chilwell rastly blasts much further off Tiger with 50 minutes remaining. But Hodgson's team was still looking dangerous and nearly wrapped up the points when Bendeke connected with an excellent deep delivery by Townsend. However, a star jump shaped Michael produced a kind of save that made his father famous. It was then Townsend's turn to try and grab a third when he picked up a pass from Loftus-Cheek and advanced to the edge of the area but fired over. And then Benteke saw a shot deflect of West Morgan, beating Smichael but not the far post. But in injury time, the gloss was put on the scoreline and an emphatic Palace performance. With the Foxes pushing forward, they were caught out and lost a cheek countered down the left, before picking out Saka who produced a fabulous curling left-footed finish from outside the box that kissed the post on its way in to cap off a wonderful afternoon for the Eagles.
Crystal Palace's long wait for an away win is over after a 3-0 success on the road against Leicester City on Saturday. The Eagles won for the first time away from home since April as they brushed aside an in-form Leicester side, with goals from Christian Menteke, Wilfred Zaha and Bakary Sacco sealing the win for Roy Hodgson's men. But what did we learn from the game? Here are five things. Number one, the long, long wait is over. Crystal Palace and striker Christian Menteke have been waiting a long time for a goal away from home. The Belgium international scored his first goal in 14 matches as he put his recent troubles in front of goal behind him. The Eagles striker had failed to score from 28 attempts in his past 13 matches and in finding the net he also snapped the club's unwanted run of not scoring away from home since April. Indeed, Benteke was the last player to score from Palace away from home, back at his old club when he scored a brace in Palace's 2-1 win at Liverpool in April. Since then, Palace have taken 90 shots over 10 games in the road, but the long wait of 237 days without an away goal is over, and so too is Benteke's barren spell. Number 2. Another record for Sperone. Julian Sperone may be the club record holder for appearances, and that currently stands at 401 after this appearance. But this is not the only record he has now, with this being his 111th clean sheet for the club and 100th in the league, equaling another club record. He made a vital save to deny Riyad Mahrez in the second half and preserve his clean sheet, and the Eagles third in a row away from home, a new record for Palace. Number 3. The unbeaten streak continues. It's not just Palace's unbeaten run that extended with this result, with the Eagles now not tasting defeat in seven games for the first time in the Premier League. But with this result, Palace boss Roy Hodgson is now also unbeaten in five games against Leicester City. Hodgson has never lost a competitive fixture against the Foxes as a manager, and after facing Leicester for a fifth time, 7,049 days after his first top flight fixture as a manager against them, he still hasn't. Number 4. Not the birthday card he wanted. Leicester City midfielder Wilfred Ndidi was sent off on his 21st birthday, becoming the first player since former Eagle striker Dwight Gale to be dismissed in the Premier League game on his birthday. Gale's dismissal was on October 2015 against West Ham United on his 25th birthday, while the Nigerian international Ndidi saw red on his 21st birthday on Saturday after being shown a second yellow card following a fall in the box. It wasn't the birthday card that he would have wanted. And number 5, the return of Maka. Palace fans could be excused for not having concerns before the game about how the Eagles would cope in midfield without the suspended Luka Milivojevic. But the performance of replacement James McArthur, together with Johan Kabay and Ruben Loftus-Cheek, meant that Milivojevic's presence in the centre of midfield was not missed. McArthur in particular was tenacious in midfield and put a new superb shift in the middle of the park. And after his midweek heroics, when he scored the winner against Watford, he'd be hopeful of keeping his place in the side for the game against Swansea next weekend. So now I'm going to move on to the player ratings, but before I start, don't forget you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Crystal Palace for all the latest Palace news. And also, if you're on Facebook, do feel free to join our Facebook group, which is a really great place for you to join in with discussions and share your opinions with other fans. And also, much like a forum, it's a great place to upload videos, photos, and any links and articles you found online that you want to share with other Palace fans and hear what they have to say and so you can debate with them. If you are someone who likes to do that, then of course, do join the Facebook group because much like what I've already said, it's very much like a forum where you can post your own things on there, you can read what others have to say, and also... it you know, you could have a bit of a debate. So if you're someone like myself who likes to discuss with other fans the ongoings and whatever's going on with the club, then of course do join the Facebook group because much like a forum and much like other Facebook groups as well, it's actually a great place for you to get in contact with other, with other fans. Now another great place to share your opinion is in YouTube comments. So if you are listening to the podcast on YouTube, then do feel free to drop a comment below the video with your player rating, rating the players from 1 to 10, and that's with 10 being the best. And you can do this along with your views in the game. And the only reason I really want you to do this is so obviously you come to the podcast to listen to my opinion, but it also I want to see what the listeners thought about the game. So rather than you just listening to my opinion, put your opinions and your player ratings in the description below so I can see how my opinion does compare to yours. And whether you're a Leicester City fan or a Palace fan, if you do have any general sort of ideas and thoughts of the game, do also comment them below because myself and other fans who come to the video can also read them and see how all of our opinions do compare to each other. So if you are someone who not only likes to share your opinion but read what others have to say, then do feel free to drop a comment below the video because it's not only for me to go back and see what the listeners thought, but also any new viewers to the channel or to the video, they can also see what people thought about the game. 
Now, if you do want to follow any of these social media pages and do join the group, then of course do check all links that will be in the description below. We're now going to move on to the player rating, starting in goal with Julian Sproni, who I am going to give a 7. Hardly troubled in the first half, but was alert in the second to make a smart stop to deny Riyad Mahrez. So Julian Sproni here, I've given him a 7, and much like his performances have been over the last few weeks, he had an alright performance because he'd done what he had to do right, but overall he was really hardly troubled, and you know, some could argue actually because he wasn't really troubled you could give him a 6, but... Obviously, where he had nothing to do in the game, you'd want him to, if there was one chance or one little, cha one little chance that Leicester got, you'd want him to make sure that he would stop them from doing that. And that's why I've given him a 7, because although he didn't do much in the game, and you would argue that's worth a 6, but the fact that he made that really great stop to obviously stop Riyad Mahrez, that is fantastic in the fact that he kept us in the game. And for that reason alone, I've given him a 7, because overall, if you look at his game, especially in the first half, he was actually hardly troubled in the first half. Slightly more so in the second, obviously with Leicester trying to push to, you know, get back into the game, obviously being 2-0 down. But ultimately, nothing came to that because our defence was really strong. But that one save in particular from Riyad Mahrez was really good. And, you know, I criticised Speroni last week, obviously. Yes, it was great that he broke 400 appearances. But from corners and set pieces, he was quite hesitant. But in this game here, although he was really troubled, there were one or two times, you know, looking back at the highlights, where actually, he met, even though he's short, he made himself bigger and was able to go forth and catch the ball. So really, some could argue I should really give him a 6, purely because of, not because of he played any worse than some of the other players, purely because he was hardly troubled. But for that one save in particular, which was the only save he had to make in the game, other than one from Jamie Vardy, which was literally down his throat, other than that, you know, he didn't really have too much to do in the game. But I personally think a 7 is a fair result for him. But we must say, obviously, last weekend, we I congratulated him on his 400th appearance for Palace. Obviously, this is his 401st appearance. But also, it was his 100th clean sheet for Palace. And this was, a, I believe, it's his league clean sheet. Because overall clean sheets, he's on 111. But in terms of league clean sheets, so that's Premier League Championship, he's on 100. So that's another great... A milestone for him obviously he's the first player to actually hit 100 clean sheets for Palace which really just shows how much of a legend he is and I touched on it last week saying the fact that he made so many appearances makes him a legend but the fact now he's actually made 100 clean sheets as well in the league is also a massive achievement as well and you know the fact that he kept the clean sheet against the very informed Leicester side who've been playing very well this season just makes the achievement even better because he could have conceded it in quite a scrappy game and, you know, he would have got his 100th clean sheet. It would have been an all right clean sheet to keep. But the fact that how well Leicester been playing recently and the fact that we kept them, we basically limited them to only two or three chances. The fact that we played so well defensively and got the clean sheet just makes the occasion all, you know, all, all the more special. But to be, to be honest, you know, to talk about his performance as a whole, in truth, wasn't really tested as much as he would have liked. Obviously, he'd like to show... You know, you know, the team and the fans, what saves he can make. But actually, maybe it's a good thing because I thought that actually, because he weren't hardly troubled, there was no real pressure on him. But like I said, when he was called upon, he was made that save. And that was really, you know, it just proves that even though he made saves that you would expect him to do and he didn't really have that much to do, the fact that when he's called upon, he can make an excellent stop when Riyad Mahrez had that really good opportunity to go forth and score for Leicester. The fact that he was able just to think on his feet, make that save, uh, with his hands the fact that he was able to do that is fantastic as well and just shows that although he's getting on a bit and some could argue he's getting a bit slower actually he's still got that experience to actually be able to make them saves and obviously get his positioning right so he can put that ball into a less dangerous area which if you look back at the replays he obviously saved the ball and we were able to clear so that just shows that not only is he making the save but he's also making sure that there's no way that Leicester could score from the follow-up but to be honest you know, just to describe the save again, you could probably say it's a blinder. You know, Riyad Mahrez, in my opinion, I put him in my fantasy team before the game. He's been on fantastic form, Riyad Mahrez. In this game, yes, you could argue he had an off game, but that was a fantastic opportunity there to score and to, you know, get Leicester back into the game. But luckily for us, Sproni pulled out a blinder. But otherwise, you know, otherwise, if you look at the game as a whole, didn't really have too much to do. And it was quite a quiet afternoon. But I did repeat myself, you know, quite a lot. But to be honest, you've got to highlight these things like this. You know, I've given him a 7 because of that m fantastic save he made from Riyad Mahrez. But if you look at the game as a whole, purely because he didn't really have too much to do in the game other than them saves, you could obviously give him the 6. But in terms of his overall performance, just describing it as a whole, I've given him a 7 purely because of that save he made. In the, in the second half, really quiet overall, you know, in terms of the first half and slightly less so in the second half. But, you know, 
the main event of his performance, you know, the, the main thing that's really important about his performance is the fact that he kept his 100 clean sheet, which of course is a great achievement. Now to move on to the right back, Martin Kelly, who I am going to give a 7. Return to the side with Timothy Fossey Mensah and Joe Ward out injured, and he put in a fine shift at right back. So before I go on to talk about Martin Kelly's performance, you know, I've got to talk about the worries we had before the game, because although Martin Kelly's played a few games alongside Mumbadi Sacco this season, obviously with Scott Dan and James Tompkins both out injured, most fans, even though we predicted that Martin Kelly would start, we were quite worried, purely because Martin Kelly hasn't played at right back uh, at all of the second half of last season, and when he played at the beginning of last season at right back, he was getting ripped to shreds and was having a, an absolute horrid time under Alan Pardew. But in this game, obviously with Fossi Mensah and Joe Ward out injured, Martin Kelly came into the side and he, he played fantastically well. Now, obviously, he's a great team performance overall, and defensively and offens offensively, we played to our absolute best. But in terms of the defensive performance, I think Martin Kelly. Considering he hasn't played right back in ages and considering he hasn't got the pace to play in that position, it, it, you know, it's, it's great for him in terms of his professionalism, the fact that he came into the side with these injuries and he actually put in a shift there. But once again, obviously we've got these injuries at the back. So we've got Saka out injured, we've got Fosu Mentor, we've got Joe Ward out injured, we've had Patrick Van Arnold injured. So we've had all of these injuries that are mounting up for Hodgson. But the fact that we've got someone like Martin Kelly who's just come back into the side who's a versatile player, can play at centre-back, play at right-back, it really shows that we have strength in depth. So although we may not have strength in depth in terms of a striker or in terms of attacking players, but in terms of defensively, we've got the likes of Reed Ward, obviously Kelly, we've got Delaney as well. We've got all these other players which really just demonstrates how we've got good strength in depth. Now, some could argue, yes, it may not be the best strength in depth, but Based on Martin Kelly's performance here, he showed once again he's very professional about what he does and even when he gets a chance to go back into the team, he does his abs absolute all for the team. And I was one of the people who was worried before the game thinking the pace of Mares and Gray and Vardy is absolutely going to rip Martin Kelly to shreds and especially, obviously, considering he hasn't really got too much pace about him. But I personally thought he put in a great shift at right back and when you consider, like I've said already, he hasn't played there for almost a year because he played there beginning of last season. You wouldn't expect him to have uh, that good of good of a game. And when you consider how Fossil Mensah was starting to find form, Joe Ward was playing so well, it's pretty hard to come back into the side and actually put in the same level of performance they have done. But I thought Martin Kelly, even though he hasn't played in the last few weeks, put in a great shift. But in terms of obviously coming into the side, I've, I've said it already, it's quite unfortunate that Fossil Mensah got injured. He obviously got a hamstring injury, so that may be... A few weeks out. Mo uh, Joe Ward, it looks like he may be returning for Swansea, but based on this performance, I think that just leave Joe Ward out for a few weeks and let Martin Kelly show what he can do because he put in a, a solid shift here. But he shows once again that even though he may not be the, even though he's the third choice, he may not be the first choice right back, he still showed that he's solid enough to do a job there. And, you know, when you consider normally that he would be third choice or he'd be playing at centre back. He's come into it and made the role his own. Yes, he may not stay there for the rest of the season, but based on this performance here, you know, the other players have got to really perform in training and come in on as substitutes because I've personally thought that Martin Kelly put in a solid performance here. And when you consider he's been in involved in a few of our clean sheets already this season, you know, you've got to get, give credit to him here. And once again, when you consider, obviously this is our first win away from home, but also our first goals, but also... Yeah, we've kept three consecutive clean sheets away from home, which just obviously it's credit to the whole team as a whole, but Martin Kelly in particular are given credit here. But the one player in particular, obviously he was, you know, his job was to keep quiet was Demiri Gray. I thought he'd done a fantastic job here. Yes, he had a few little runs and crosses here and there, but he kept him relatively quiet, which actually, obviously with Leicester playing so well recently, it's been something that not many teams and not many players have been managed to do in the fact that they've kept the likes of Mares, Gray and Vardy quiet. So once again, you've got to give credit for Martin Kelly for actually stopping any attacking threat down that right-hand flank. And I personally thought he'd done a good job there. But Martin Kelly, I've given him a seven. He's come back into the side with obviously the injury to Fossi Mensah and Joe Ward. And I personally thought he put in a great shift at right back. So do comment below whether you think he should retain his place if Joe Ward is back from fitness, uh, back from his injury. So if you think that, you know, he should come back straight out of the team or whether you think Joe Ward should come back uh, straight back into the team, do comment below with your views. But Martin Kelly, I think a seven is a fair result. Now to move on to James Tompkins, who I'm going to give a seven. 
Another assured display from the centre-back with some composed defending. So James Tonkins here, I've given him a 7. And much like the performance of Martin Kelly and some of the things I'll probably re repeat again. But I thought defensively, it was another solid performance from him. And when you consider, obviously, three consecutive away clean sheets with obviously a mixture of Dan, Tompkins, Kelly all playing a role to play obviously in them games you've got to give credit to them here and once again with James Tompkins we know how good he is and some could argue besides Sacco he's our best defender but I think this is another performance where he was he was assured and actually he looked quite composed so what makes him better than Sacco is the fact that whenever Tompkins is on the ball or whether Tompkins makes a tackle he looks quite composed with it and it doesn't look like he'd make a mistake as opposed to Sacco, who always looks like he may have a mistake in him. So that's something I like about James Tonkin's performance. And in this game, again, he, he showed it again. But obviously, with Leicester playing as well as they have been recently, they did start the game quite well, as did Palace. So it was quite an even affair up until the first goal on about 15 minutes. But in terms of Leicester's attacking play, they were stretching us quite a lot, obviously using the pace to get in behind of Vardy and Morris. And quite early on, they were putting loads of balls over the top to Jamie Vardy. And there was one that obviously kept our back line off guard. Obviously, obviously Jamie Vardy's got past the offside trap, got through on goal. But obviously, once they made that mistake, the defence, especially Tompkins, didn't make that mistake again. So once again, James Tompkins, yes, they made that little error within the first sort of few minutes of the game with that ball over the top to Jamie Vardy. But that, that mistake, that the fact that you gave Vardy too much space and you gave players too much space to get the ball into the box that didn't happen again pure, purely because obviously the defenders so Tompkins and Dan they learnt from their mistakes and made sure that that didn't happen but I mentioned this last week about the Dan and Tompkins partnership it really does look like it's quite it's forming to quite a solid partnership now although it didn't quite work out last season obviously under Alan Pardew but based on the last sort of three games and Based on what we've seen this season as a whole, I think that Tompkins and Dan could be a good partnership um, up until Sacco comes back. So actually, this partnership with Dan and Tompkins, you know, it, it looks like that just about we can probably get, a, you know, do without Sacco at the minute, purely because of how well these two are playing. But personally, for me, when Sacco comes back, if he comes back fully fit, it's Tompkins for me who goes straight back in that side. But if you've got someone like Saka who's so good, you need someone to come in and replace him. And I think that, that Dan has come in and done exactly that and actually has worked well with James Tonkins. But the only issue really, obviously I've given him a 7 for his performance. But the only real issue about uh, Tonkins' performance is the fact that he committed so many fouls. And these were not only just fouls anywhere on the pitch. These were in quite dangerous areas. So obviously Leicester were putting men forward trying to obviously get a goal back or get some sort of consolation from the game and that did put us under pressure towards sort of the end of the second half but obviously James Tonkin, Scott Dan, they did deal with that in the fact that we kept the clean sheet but that obviously did result in us conceding a few fouls and they were in quite dangerous areas you know on the edge of the area um you know by, by the corner flag so there was quite a few times actually where Yes, they made a foul, which is great, and they stopped the goal-scoring opportunity. But actually, maybe it would have been better to at least try and attempt a tackle as opposed to make a foul. But luckily for us, yes, we were giving away all of these fouls in dangerous areas, like I said already, on the edge of the area. But because the home side, you know, they weren't really playing up to their standards, they have been in their previous four games. Because Leicester weren't really playing to that sort of high level, they obviously didn't capitalise on these little uh, fouls. And there was one in particular from Gray fantastic position uh, right on the edge of the penalty area he goes to take it and he blasted it into the stands which really just you know just sums up how Leicester were playing on the day but James Tonkins here you know great performances in the last few weeks he's continued it here with another assured display where once again we saw some composed defending now to move on to the captain and centre-back Scott Dan who I'm going to give a seven a good afternoon from the skipper who dealt with Leicester's attacking threats well although he did have a handball shout against him in his own area waved away. So Scott Dan here, I've given him a 7, and much like the performance I keep repeating for all of the defenders, when you consider it's our third clean sheet on a, on, in a row away from home, you could actually say that it was quite a solid performance defensively, and certainly in this game, especially Scott Dan, he was certainly one of the key players in terms of keeping that clean sheet. But in terms of being the captain you know I've criticised him quite a lot this season when he's been the captain and the fact that that's weighted him down and affected his defensive performance because it's take his duty of being the captain has taken away his duty from defending 
But in this game, I thought he got the balance right, and actually it was a really good afternoon for him. And like I've mentioned already with James Tompkins, when you consider how much attacking threat Leicester have got and how well they've been playing this season, I thought that Scott Dan not being the quickest alongside Tompkins, they actually done a pretty decent job, in my opinion, in actually stopping Leicester's attacks. And even when they did get through, we'd either have Speroni or someone like Kelly or Slop to go back and cover. So ultimately, yes, Scott Dan indivi like individually, each player's had their bits that they've done in the game, which were good. But collectively, as a whole, I think the defence as a unit done actually a really good job. Now, there was one downside about his performance. You know, he could have had a handball shout against him. Obviously, it got waved away and Leicester didn't have the chance. But really, looking back at the replays, it's like, yeah, if it would be really harsh if it was given. But then you could understand that actually on another day, maybe you could give it. But personally, not trying to be biased, but I don't think there's really too much in it. So really, good defensive performance from him. Commanded the team well. Dealed with Leicester's threats offensively and obviously was obviously got the, the penalty appeal got turned away. But in terms of his involvement in the game, there was one of the most dramatic parts in the game. It was obviously where Wilfred indeed he got sent off for simulation. And actually he obviously tried to he fell to the ground indeed after the challenge from Dan. And it was a supposed challenge which we which we now know because he got sent off, it wasn't one. And if you look back at the replays, it's a fantastic spot from the uh, from the referee to actually see that a it's not a foul and b obviously that is a dive and obviously that's the second yellow card and a red card but dan was obviously the player involved in that along with MacArthur, they were the players who were in the way of wilford indeedy and indeedy he, he was he was almost looking to latch on to someone's foot so as he's going running through on goal he's tried to sort of twist his foot so he would get caught on someone and and in the hope they got you know falls down and if you look back at the replays Obviously that didn't work, he just fell to the ground. Both MacArthur and Dan pulled away. So really, it's just a stupid dive really. And when you consider his, it's his birthday, it's a real shame for him because he just embarrassed himself uh, really from that, that decision. Because diving, we know that diving isn't acceptable, it's cheating. So now it's we're starting to see players get punished for that. But I must say, well done to the referee in terms of spotting that. But other than being involved and having an overall good performance, he was kept under the radar nicely. So he went along doing his job. Nothing real fantastic, but he was doing what he had to do. Now, he was quite lucky, obviously, that Vardy knocked across. Obviously, a cross came in from Gray. Knocked it, Speroni. Uh, sorry, Vardy knocked it to Speroni, obviously, because he stole a yard from Dan. So, obviously, Dan hasn't got the most pace and he's up against Jamie Vardy. So, when that cross comes in from Gray, obviously, Vardy gets just ahead of Dan. And obviously Speroni's been able to, you know, claim that. So maybe a downside of his game is obviously his pace, but he can't really do anything about that. But one of the few times, that was only one of the few times that Leicester got really ahead of him, got the better of him. So that was the one chance, obviously, a ball from Gray. Vardy getting in behind Dan, and obviously Speroni was able to, you know, easily claim that. So maybe we could say about Dan, when he's playing against really pacey wingers or pacey strikers, he's going to be more aware of the players around him but in terms of Tompkins you know this is the last thing I discussed with Tompkins but he was quite guilty of quite a lot of fouls in scorable positions but obviously Mares and the rest of the Leicester team had a sort of less than an inspiring afternoon let's call it they didn't really have that much threat going forward and when they had chances to get back into the game they obviously didn't take them and that's why the game ended 3-0 but Scott Dan much like Tompkins yes it's great that they're taking one for the team and they're stopping a goal scoring opportunity but they've got to be careful not to give away too many fouls because a they might get booked and b you're giving the opposition way too many chances uh, which they can score from but scott down here the captain another solid performance from him you know i've given him a seven because it was another great performance defensively i thought that considering leicester's form recently i thought he dealt with their attacking threats really well and although he had that shout of handball waved away I thought that overall, other than obviously getting beaten for pace by Vardy, I thought overall he had a very solid game defensively. But do comment below with your views. Now to move on to the left back Jeffrey Slup, who I am going to give a 7. Back at Leicester made an early impression with a superb burst into the box. Steady enough after that, but was booked for a foul on Mahrez. So Jeffrey Slup here, I've given him a 7, and unlike his performances in recent weeks where they've been quite poor, as opposed to being quite average as his performances have been before that, 
in this game here, he's totally put the last sort of two or three games behind him and actually had a really solid performance here against his old club Leicester. And I've given him the seven purely because, you know, when team when players go back to their old teams, there's quite a lot of pressure on them to obviously perform and show them why they were wrong to sell them or just to prove them wrong. And actually, I thought that slap, he went to Leicester and actually made an impression. And quite, uh, quite early on in the game, picked up the ball on the edge of the box, ran past two or three defenders, and that was a superb burst into the box, great pace, and obviously his cross, Benteke couldn't quite latch onto it. So not only was he not letting his head go down by the fact that he was playing against his old club, but actually he created one of our best chances early on in the game, because like I said, picked up the ball in the edge of the area, fantastic pace and skill to get past three defenders, and unluckily for us, no one was able to get on the end of that cross. But after that, obviously, that was a fantastic piece of play early on. After that, it was a very steady performance. You know, he kept going, kept putting in uh, good averages before uh, average performance. And the only downside, really, is that he got booked on Mahrez. Nothing cynical, just, you know, City foul got booked on that. But to be honest, it was quite evident quite early on, obviously, with that chance where he got into the box, that actually Slup did mean business. And obviously, Leicester obviously sold him to Palace. They've obviously overlooked him, saw that he was surplus to requirements at Leicester. And obviously sold him to Palace. And actually it looked like that Slup was trying to make a point to them. And he certainly, based on his first half performance and his defensive performance overall, I thought he certainly done that. And like I've said already, within the first few minutes, that was sort of the real first chance we did create in the game. And he put in that beautiful cross where he weaved past three players. And obviously Benteke failed to, you know, kept with, oh, sorry, was able to fail to connect with it. But in terms of, Keeping the momentum out for the majority of the game, I thought he'd done that. So he didn't let his performance levels drop and he carried on that momentum to help us push on and get, you know, get them three goals in the game. And then in the end, you know, much like um, Martin Kelly keeping Demiri Gray, Gray sorry, uh, quite quiet down that wing, I thought that Jeffrey Slop on the opposite flank actually done a great job of keeping Mares quite quiet. Which actually, when you consider how well Mares has been playing for Leicester recently, it's quite a serious job in itself. So not only have you got to deal with the whole team defensively, your opposition, you've also got to deal in one player in particular, which was Mares in this case. And actually, I thought that that's actually quite a hard job to do. And to be honest, when I've talked about Slop, I've, you know, most of this season, if you look back, I've given him sixes after sixes, purely because he's one of these players who constantly puts in average performances. And the last sort of two or three games, he's been slightly under par. But come back into this game again against his former club, I thought he had one of the best games in his last sort of two or three. But actually, you could look at the game as a whole and actually you could argue that this was probably one of his best of the season. But Jeffrey Slup here playing in that left-back role, I've given him a seven because although he went back to his former club, I thought he made a good impression to them to sort of prove them wrong of, as to why they overlooked him and sold him. And actually, that little burst of pace in the box was absolutely superb early on in the game and he carried on that form as the game went on but Jeffrey Slup here a 7 for him much better offensive performance from him but once again a solid defensive performance now to move on to the midfielder Johan Kabai who I am going to give a 7 battled away in the middle and ensured that Leicester weren't able to break the midfield so Johan Kabai here I've given him a 7 and much like whenever we do win a game or whenever we draw a game I do often mention winning the midfield battle and in this game it was you know not even uh, it was so evident in the fact that we won the midfield game or the midfield battle purely because of Kabai and MacArthur and how well they were playing in the midfield. Now in terms of Kabai's performance, obviously playing in, in, in that sort of midfield partnership alongside MacArthur, I thought he battled well in the midfield. So he was not only putting in tackles of, and protecting the back four, but he was going forward and attacking. And, you know, in terms of his overall play, I thought he put himself about a bit. You know, he was all over the pitch making things happen. And giving his all for the team. And to be honest, in terms of winning that midfield battle, the main thing is is making sure that the opposition are not able to break down the team and the midfield. And ba and looking back at this performance, Kabai and MacArthur in particular, they made sure that Leicester weren't able to control the midfield, but also because they were protecting the back four, made sure that they weren't able to break us down as well. Now, when you consider Milivojevic, he obviously got suspended because he picked up his fifth yellow card. Of the season against Watford obviously he's a massive loss he's he's been playing fantastic for us this season and against Watford he was absolutely superb but it just showed that we've got a little bit of squad depth now in central midfield where Kabai can come back into the team and Carver can come back in and actually they can 
do that sort of anchor role in front of the back four just as good as Milivojevic can do. Now, obviously, it's not ideal having McArthur and Kabai play there because that's not their natural positions. But when you've got someone like Milivojevic, who's fantastic and he gets suspended, you want someone to come into that role and actually make up for that loss. And I certainly thought that Kabai and McArthur, in particular, made sure that we didn't really feel that absence of Milivojevic. Now, obviously, in Leicester, they like to play their sort of counter-attacking style of football, attack with pace, with Gray and Mares. But to be honest, the, because the back four were protected so well by Kabai and McArthur, I thought that it totally neutralised, uh, so yeah, neutralised in terms of Leicester's attacking threat. So they were trying to attack throughout the game, but because we had, basically you could argue at times when we were out of position, we had six men behind the ball, because we had that solid foundation at the bottom of the, a bo at the bottom of our team, we were able to stop Leicester from going forth and attacking. And to be honest, in terms of Kabai and McArthur, I thought that defensive, defensively they were great and offensively they were just as good as well. And to be honest, if you look back at the goals, obviously Kabai's had a hand in a few goals. He's got a few assists this season. But actually, he was one of the guys who actually set up Benteke's goal. So if you look back at it, he was the one, um, Kabai was the one linking up with Townsend on that right-hand side and passed the ball to Townsend who eventually, you know, put the ball into Benteke's head. So not only did Kabai, you know, Helped the team defensively, but he actually was involved in one of the goals we scored. But Johan Kabai here, I've given him a seven. I thought that he battled really well, really well in the midfield, and obviously ensured that we won that midfield battle. In the fact that Leicester couldn't break us down in the midfield, and when you consider the big loss of Milivojevic, it was going to be big boots, and it was going to be hard to fill these big boots. But I thought him and McArthur had done a fantastic job. Now to move on to James McArthur, who I am going to give an eight. Rewarded for his heroics in midweek with a start in the place of the suspended Luka Milivojevic and took his chance with an energetic display in the midfield. So James McCarthy here, I've given him an 8 and some could argue, having seen people's reactions on social media, that actually James McCarthy quite possibly could have been one of the best players on the field. And that's not because he obviously scored the goals or assisted any of the goals, but purely because of how well he played in the midfield. Now before I go on to talk about his performance, you know, I've already talked about it when I was reviewing the Watford game. But in terms of that game, he obviously got the winning goal and got us the three points there. But because of that, obviously with Milivojevic being suspended, James McArthur rightly earned his place in the squad because of his he heroic efforts against Watford. So I personally think there was no real reason why he shouldn't have been in the side. And actually, I did predict the starting eleven right. So actually, I thought that McArthur, right, you know, fully deserved to come into the squad because of Milivojevic getting suspended. And actually, it's not like he came to came into the squad and didn't perform because I've given him the 8 purely because he came into the side and actually took his chance to impress and he's certainly done that because it looked like for me looking at the game it looked like he had found his form again when he was playing alongside Kabai two seasons ago when Kabai first came to the club so that partnership they had two or three seasons ago looking back at this Leicester game at the weekend it actually looked like quite a similar performance in the way that they linked up in the midfield but overall, you know, the main reason I've given him the 8 is because of how energetic his performance was. But in terms of obviously coming into the side, like I've already mentioned, he came in to replace Milivojevic, who obviously got suspended. But I thought, considering the high standards Milivojevic has set this season, I thought that Bakar had, done, had an excellent game in terms of coming into the side. And actually, much like what Luka does in that defensive midfield role, protecting the back four, I thought he'd done great in terms of dictating the play and you know I've already mentioned it with Kabai but in terms of winning that midfield battle McArthur and Kabai were quite crucial in terms of doing that. Now obviously for the first sort of few minutes we obviously dominated the game obviously we started the game full of energy full of determination from the first whistle but the only problem with that is is because we were attacking so free, free flowing it obviously left us a little bit liable to obviously be hit on the counter attack but Quite soon after, obviously that was rectified because McArthur was the man made to stay back and defend. So doing that Milivojevic role in front of the back four. So McArthur was told to come back and ultimately that stopped our problem of being too open and being able or being liable or being hit on the break. So McArthur being that sort of marshalled uh, player in, in front of the back four. So being that brick wall, he'd done that really well. And because of that, because we were playing almost like a back six because we had our back four and Kabai and McArthur playing in that deep sort of defensive midfield role because we had them there it just made it so hard for Leicester to break us down so it's not only you know having a player of Milivojevic's quality there to do all of the work 
but you've got someone like MacArthur and Kabai who can come in there and still do a shift in terms of you know giving protection to the back four now obviously there was a few times where we've got the whole team's under pressure so you've got the likes of Benteke, Townsend, Zaha and Loftus-Cheek as well they were all coming back to defend so when that was the case and we had loads of players in our own half there was a few times where MacArthur instead of just flooding the midfield he'd go and double up on the fullbacks and help obviously Jeffrey Slough and Martin Kelly to obviously defend the likes of Mares and Gray so that just shows actually he's able to give protection not only to our back four but he's also be able to give protection to the fullbacks when they're trying to defend against you know again against these attacking threats that Leicester have and you know the only real way and the main reason I've given him an eight the real way to explain his performance is just the fact that he was instrumental in keeping the clean sheet because it wasn't just how energetic he was in terms of winning the midfield battle but the most important thing was the fact that he gave that protection to the back four because if it wasn't for that we would have been slightly more open as a team and Leicester would have probably had more counter-attacking opportunities so the fact that the defence played well but the main fact that McCarth gave them so much protection is why we went forth to keep the clean sheet but McCarthy here I've given him an 8 obviously scored midweek and rightly earned his place in the squad in terms of replacing Milivojevic he took his chance with another energetic display in the midfield and personally with Benteke being out suspended there was obviously going to be a bit of debate and a bit of organisation for Hodgson to do to decide who's going to go in his place but I don't see any reason why Let's say we play without a striker. I don't see why we couldn't have a midfield three of MacArthur, Milivojevic and Kabai. So James MacArthur here, I've given him an 8, which I think is a fair result. Now to move on to Ruben Loftus-Cheek, who I am going to give a 7. Looked dangerous going forward and provided a vital link between the midfield and the attack. So Ruben Loftus-Cheek here, I've given him a 7. And much like his performance in midweek, it was another good performance from the Chelsea low knee. Now in terms of... I talked about in in that game in terms of him playing out of position. In this game, obviously we played a little bit more narrow in the fact that uh, Zaha was playing off Benteke but drifted out wide, and the fact that Loftus Cheek was playing out wide and also drifted inward. So yes, he was still playing out of position at times in the game, but actually the majority of the game he spent down the middle. And actually, I thought that in terms of going forward, in terms of picking up the ball and driving forward, I thought he looked quite dangerous. Now the thing that I did really like about his game and the fact that the thing that we should have been utilising in the last sort of three or four games is the fact that how he brings a link between the midfield and the attack. So not not that the midfield have to just ping long balls to Benteke and or give it to the defence to ping long balls. It's the fact that you can give the ball to Loftus Cheek playing playing sort of an attacking midfield role. He can pick up the ball from midfield, drive forward and link up Benteke, Zaha and Townsend. So that's something that we've been missing in the last few games is that we haven't had someone there, we've been playing 4-4-2 and there's been no one there to get the ball from the midfield to the strikers but now, uh, or based on what we saw in this game, Loftus-Cheek when he drifted down in the centre he was the guy who would pick up the ball, drive forward and have that link between, between the attack and the midfield so that's something we've been missing and it was good to see it here. Now to be honest, Leicester they've been one of the best sides in the Premier League in the last sort of few games in terms of form and actually, they're one of the biggest sides as well. So yes, they've been on form, but also they've got that height advantage. But because of Loftus-Cheek and the, the presence he's got and the strength he's got, I thought that Leicester found him quite difficult to deal with. And that's quite weird when you consider the height and the form they've got coming into this game. But to be honest, it was he created basically Palace's first good chance in the game. And it was involving him, Zaha and Benteke. But unfortunately, obviously, Loftus-Cheek... It was, he was the latter person involved. He took a shot and he scuffed it. But, you know, the fact that he was able to get in that position when he was playing down the middle and link up, once again, linking up with the attack in Zaha, in Zaha and Benteke, the fact that he could do that it is great, but maybe he should just, you know, work on his finishing because if you get chances like that, eventually, if you keep getting them, you're going to get better. So maybe on another day, he would have scored that. But the fact that he was able to link up with the attacking players was good as well but like I've, I've mentioned this quite a lot whenever he does get chance chances like that and he misses it's just sort of a sign of what things are to come and because of the way that these three linked up it just showed that actually maybe this has got a bit of potential with Loftus-Cheek playing down the middle and Zaha playing off Benteke and out wide so maybe this has got a bit of potential and we saw that in this game here but like I've said Loftus-Cheek great chance but maybe you know he should have taken his chance better but hopefully having that chance in this game 
will hopefully build him up uh, for the games coming up. Now, in terms of um, support from the fullbacks, I thought they got loads of help from and support from Slup. So I've criticised Jeffrey Slup quite a lot this season for not being so good offensively. But in this game, he done fantastically well, like dribbling past the players in the box. But the main thing was the fact that he was providing support to Loftus Cheek. So whenever Loftus Cheek was playing out wide, Jeffrey Slup would offer him uh, an overlap or would offer him that that option in terms of a pass. And actually, I thought that yes. Loftus Cheek's performance was good, but I thought that Jeffrey Slup, in terms of supporting him, was one of the main reasons why his performance was so good. Now, most of the good balls, obviously, that came to Benteke were actually played off the ground from Loftus Cheek, so we weren't just pumping long balls to Benteke. Quite a lot of them were coming from Loftus Cheek, and that just highlights the point again in the fact that Ruben is the guy who links up the midfield and the attack, and I thought that he's also great at actually making that gap between two of his own so in the fact that he can make that chance he can make that space uh for the other team to attack but to be honest i think that it's great that he can you know pick out that pass to benteke and actually you know get in the back or get in between the two defenders of leicester and to be honest just to top off what was a great performance where he was linked up with, with benteke zaha and slop he obviously got the assist for sacco's goal so leicester towards the end of the game they were putting all men forward and it was they had 10 men forward. Oh, sorry, it would have been 9 because they had a player sent off. So they had 9 men forward with Smykle in goal. And he was quite high up on the pitch on the edge of his penalty area. We've obviously stole the ball of Leicester. We've counter-attacked. Lovely ball to Loftus-Cheek. Loftus-Cheek with a fantastic, powerful run forward. Passed the ball to Sacco. Not the best pass, obviously, because Sacco, um, you know, it almost got intercepted. But Sacco made good use of it and obviously Sacco went on to score, which was an absolutely fantastic goal. One of the goals of the season contenders in terms of Palace's goals, which is great. But the attack as well, which was beautiful. The fact that Loftus-Cheek was able to drive forward, that was great as well. But Loftus-Cheek here, another great game from the Loney. A 7 for him where he looked dangerous going forward. And like I've already mentioned, he did provide that link which had been missing between the midfield and the attack in recent games. Now let's move on to Andrus Townsend, who I am going to give a 7. Got the assist with a great in-swinging cross for Benteke to head home the opener, and provided a constant threat on the wing. So Andrus Townsend here, I've given him a 7, and on, unlike his performances recently where I've been criticising him quite a lot, not because of his lack of effort, but because he didn't have any end product in this game here, and the reason I've given him a 7 is because he sort of upped his game a bit, and I don't know whether it's because... He was linked with Leicester in the summer and whether he was trying to impress them. Or maybe it's just because he's, you know, he's got rid of his purple patch and has started to pick up form again. But whatever it was, this was a much better performance from him and a well-deserved 7. Now, in terms of the main thing about his performance, obviously, overall, the, the, the show will be Benteke, Zaha and Loftus-Cheek. But actually, Andros Townsend, yes, he had a quieter game in comparison to them. But that cross for Benteke's goal, which was the main thing about his game was absolutely fantastic. So I've already mentioned Kabai was the guy who gave the ball and supplied the ball to Townsend. But that cross, that in-swinging cross on his left foot, I believe it was, from Townsend on that right flank to get the ball to ta uh, for Benteke to score his first goal of the season and our first away from home was absolutely fantastic. So obviously in the last few games, I've been criticising him for overhitting crosses and not putting in enough crosses. Whereas in this game, he put in a cross and it was absolutely pinpoint on obviously got us you know got us our first goal and that's the thing with him in terms of playing on the wing giving him that freedom to play out wide I thought that he provided a constant threat for us now obviously with Benteke being suspended for the next game we may see us go back to a 4-4-2 with Townsend and Zaha playing up front personally I'd rather see us play without a striker as silly as it may seem because based on this game here when you give Townsend the freedom to play on that wing he does really well there but the one sort of minor criticism I think you could say of Palace at the moment is there's still not enough crosses being put into the air of Benteke. And that just showed in this game that when you do put in a cross, Benteke will get in the end of it and score. And that's something we haven't done recently. So although we've got this fantastic player in terms of Benteke in winning headers, we weren't putting in enough balls. And that's a still one little criticism recently of us is the fact that yes we're playing some nice football and we're getting good results but we still should be putting in more crosses into the box for Benteke to get on the end of them and it just showed in this game that when you do put in a cross Benteke is able to take the chance so hopefully in the next few games we'll put more 
you know crosses into the box and eventually the more you put in the more chances you're going to create so hopefully that means that better things are to come for us this season now obviously i mentioned townsend's performance has not been great recently but he's one of the only players in my opinion who regularly uh, tries to you know tries to give his all for the team so i mentioned us not putting enough balls into into Benteke, which is obviously a whole team criticism, but Townsend's one of these players who actually quite regularly does look to get the balls to Benteke. So although his performances haven't been good recently, at least he's been trying to supply Benteke, and it just showed in this game that when you supply him, he'd score. But to be honest, obviously in terms of perfection, his assist to Benteke was f fantastic. In terms of crosses, that's how uh, that's as perfectionate as you can get across. But in terms of other chances. At least he was one of the only players on the field who regularly tried to get the balls to Benteke. Now that's not to say he had a fantastic game, but at least he had that attacking intent to actually get, you know, get the ball in the area. There, there were obviously other things other than crossing in the game. There was a few times where he played some other beauty of passes, including one. So just after the restart with his favoured foot and it almost gave Benteke a second. So lovely run to the byline from Townsend. Lovely cross in and obviously Benteke was unable to convert because of great save by Smichael so obviously in the last few games I've criticised him for not putting in enough crosses and not having having end product but in this game here he obviously got the assist but also he tried to set up other goals and it was just a good save from Smichael which prevented Benteke from scoring and from Townsend getting another assist but unfortunately obviously he's not in his best of his form recently and he had a chance himself to score but obviously he couldn't convert it and it was a lovely ball on the edge of the area and he overhit it. But it was a lovely setup for by Loftus Cheek. So once again, Loftus Cheek linking up well with the attacking players. But ultimately, you know, because Townsend's not in the best of form recently, I still, you know, it would have been nicer for him to take that chance better. But when you're off form, when a ball comes to you on the edge of the area, you're eager to get a goal. Sometimes you rush it a bit. And in Townsend's case, he rushed it. And it went over. But Townsend's performance here, although I've criticised him in recent uh, recent weeks because of his not effortless performances, but the fact that he didn't have any own product in this game here, I've given him a seven because we started to see that improving and we started to see him being a more constant threat down that wing. And obviously, the main reason I've given him a seven is that cross for Benteke. But what we've got to do now, not only to improve as a team, but him personally, he's got to now try and get more balls to Benteke. And as a whole, as a team, we need to do that. But Townsend, because of how good his crosses are, we need to see more crosses from him. But Andrews Townsend here, a 7, I think is a fair result. Now to move on to Wilfred Zaha, who I am going to give an 8. Linked up well with Loftus-Cheek and Benteke, and was a constant menace for the Leicester defenders. Also showed good composure for his goal. So Wilfred Zaha here, I've given him an 8, and much like his performances have been this season, it was another fantastic performance from him where he got a goal, but not only that, he was a constant threat for his for the opposition. Now in terms of linking up play, and I've already discussed this quite a lot already, but I thought that he was linked up quite well with Loftus Cheek and Benteke. So in terms of our front four players, it's great to see that they're linking up well together and created chances for the team. And that's something we didn't see at the beginning of the season, where obviously we were trying to play a new system under De Boer. And it weren't quite working. And that's purely because players weren't linking up well with each other. They weren't really playing for each other. And that's ultimately why we went seven games without a win at the beginning of the season. But we've turned a corner now. And now we're starting to see perform um, improvements in performance, in organisation. And it's not only the defenders that are improving. But it's also offensively we're creating better chances. And we're being creating more meaningful chances as well. But in terms of Zaha's performance, I've given him an 8. We know how good he's been this season. But once again, he was a constant menace for the Leicester defenders. And when you consider Wes Morgan in particular, Wilfred Zaha didn't just break his ankles a few times, but he also burned him for pace quite a few times as well, which just shows how good and how good of a threat Wilfred Zaha is. Now, in terms of his goal, I thought he showed great composure. Obviously, in terms of doing that step over to get past the defender, wrong foot him, and then get round the defender and score. Great composure there to get that and obviously great skill with the step over. But obviously that was the second goal in the game. Which some could argue killed off the game. Because 2-0 before half time it's very hard for the other team to get back into it. But Leicester done alright in the second half to try and get back in it. But I think that it was quite important we got that second goal just before half time. To make sure that when we came out for the second half we would, wouldn't lose confidence. And would be able to put in 
put in a similar second half performance as we did in the first half. But yes, it was great goal by Zaha, obviously the step over and the skill. But you've got to give credit to Benteke as well. The fact that Benteke was able to time his run, be very physical, get the ball to Zaha. And obviously when you get such a good chance like that from uh, uh, you know, another teammate of yours, you're going to make sure you take use of it. And certainly Zaha took, took, took full advantage of that fantastic ball from Benteke. But to be honest, he still had a lot to do before he netted. So before he scored the goal, I thought that there was quite a lot of the times where Leicester were sitting quite deep because we started the game quite well. And actually, in order to sort of get past the last man and actually get the ball in, in the area, Zaha moved out quite wide. And actually, he was creating quite a lot of chances uh, for himself to do. But obviously, quite a lot of the time, we were aiming for him in that bottom left because you know, he was the biggest threat in, in terms of in terms of our play. But that's the thing about Zaha. We know how good he is this season. We know how he can put pressure and how he can hurt the opposition players. And in this game here, drifting from the middle and out wide and, you know, winning the ball, everything about his game was fantastic as well. But aside from that, in, in, you know, aside from, you know, taking the ball out wide and trying to create chances and obviously the goal, aside from that, his link-up play once again, uh, with Loftus Cheek and Benteke caused Leicester so many problems and so many headaches. And obviously, because of how good and how skillful these three players in particular are, I thought that you know Leicester did struggle to deal with them. But eventually, obviously, they began to lose their heads towards the end of the game. Leicester, of course, having been uh, having won four games in a row, then two 0 down at this point. They're going to start losing their heads, quite frustrated. And there was quite a number of fouls where Zaha was trying to run through on goal or try to attack on the counter. And obviously he was getting, you know, hooked down by Leicester City players. And obviously they they got booked and indeed he was one of the players who got booked and eventually got sent off. But the fact that Zaha, even when he was getting constantly tackled and even when we're comfortable in a 2-0 lead, he still tried to attack and actually still, you know, try and kill off the game even more by making it 3-0 but the, you know the fact that he was so good in the game it just shows how good he was the fact that Leicester were getting fro so frustrated that they had to keep you know making fouls and they were you could argue losing their heads because that's the only way that they thought they could deal with the threat of Zaha was by constantly tackling him and unluckily for what uh, for Leicester actually came back to punish them in the fact that indeed he got sent off but Wilfred Zaha here I've given him an eight. We know what to expect from him this season. You know, you know, with his constant attacking threat, his pace, his skill, his crossing ability. We saw all of that in this game. We saw another fantastic goal where, you know, yes, the ball from Benteke was good, but the fact that Zaha stepped over, stepped over the defender, passed one, passed another, put another one on his on on his uh, ass, and the fact that he was able just to, you know, get past him as well and shoot past him. Uh, you know was fantastic as well so that just really summed up what was a great performance and when you consider you know to, to in the second half where he literally ran past three defenders done lovely skill by dribbling past them and put the ball to Benteke ch his chances like that was just show how much of a good talent he is now obviously we don't know what will happen at the end of, end of the season but if he carries on like this of course he's going to attract interest from other teams but at the moment we need to cherish cherish it, cherish it uh, whilst it lasts because at the minute he's playing absolutely fantastic and you know some may think it's stupid to say this but I personally think he is a world class world class player at the minute if not based on current form one of the best wingers in in the league because it may sound stupid but he's he's, he's a constant threat a constant fawn to the opposition and hopefully in the next few weeks he can keep building on this and get a few more goals because although he's got I think it's three or four goals this season. He still hasn't got an assist, even though there's two or three goals, which you could debate, that actually he did assist it in the game. But Wilfred Zaha here, an eight for him. Another fantastic performance where he linked up well with Loftus-Cheek and Benteke. And in terms of his usual, you know, his usual game plan, which he does against the opposition, he was once again a constant menace. Now to move on to the final player and striker, Christian Benteke, who I am going to give an eight. Shot up front and finally broke his duck for the season with a well-taken header. Also provided the assist for Zaha's goal as he grew in confidence and could have had more goals. The only downside was a booking that now rules him out of next week's clash at Swansea City. So Christian Menteke here, I've given him an 8. And much like the performance of Wilfred Zaha and James McArthur, these players shone out for me in the game. And that's why 
I've given him an 8. And, you know, when you consider how badly our start of the season has been and the fact that we're now starting to pick up results, it's actually quite rare this season that I've actually given players 8. So, in terms of Benteke making up for that penalty miss, I think he's done a good job when you consider I've given him an 8 here. But in terms of his overall play in the game, I thought he shone up front. And actually, when you consider he's gone, I think it was 14 games uh, without scoring his longest run uh, in the Premier League. He finally broke that record and it was a fantastic header. You know, I talked about the cross from Townsend being pinpoint and accurate. But also the header from Benteke. Yes, some could argue that he should have put it far post or near post because obviously it would have been away from Smeichel. But he, he put it down to the ground, so it made it hard for Smeichel to save. Smeichel tried to make a save, only got the slightest touch on it, and obviously it went in. So not only was it a good cross, but it was a good header as well. Love, lovely power on the header to hit the ground so it would go into the net. So that was great, obviously, to see him get his first goal for the season and our first away from home. But because of that, because he got that first goal, he grew in confidence as the game went on. And obviously, therefore, got the assist for Zaha's goal. So, I talked about Kabai and MacArthur winning the ball back and giving the ball to Benteke for that counter-attack for Zaha's goal. But the amazing thing was is that Benteke, he was running through. He isn't the fastest guy, but he's got a Leicester player on him. He managed to shrug him off, put that fantastic weighted pass to Zaha, and obviously Zaha was able to score. So, not only was Benteke proving that he can score with his head, but also he's proving that he can use his hold-up play and physicality to hold up two or three players and then pass the ball to another attacker for them to score. So it was just great that, that he'd done that. And obviously where he grew in confidence even more after he got the assist. And actually he could have had more goals. So there was a few chances where Townsend put in balls and he put he got his head on it and Smeichel made a save. There was one from Wilf where he ran into the area, got the ball to him and he got tackled. So actually there were quite a few chances that if Benteke had taken them, taken them, or if he hadn't have been tackled, maybe he could have had maybe three or four goals in this game. And that, that's not to say that if he had taken them, he would have scored. But the fact that he had two or three goal scoring opportunities was great to see. And it certainly did make up for that penalty miss uh, against Watford a few weeks ago. But the only sort of downside of, of his performance, you know, I've given him an eight because he got a goal, he got an assist and he had an overall great physical performance. But the only downside is obviously he got booked uh, his yellow card is fifth of the season, which now means he misses the game against Swansea City. Now, obviously, he's now scored a goal, and just as he starts to get form, he obviously gets suspended. But hopefully, because we've coped before without playing with a striker, hopefully it won't affect our game um, too well. But to be honest, when Benteke scores a goal, his first of the season, it's obviously easy to say that he had a great game because he obviously he broke that record. But his goal, because he scored the goal, it changed the whole complexion of the game because. At that point, yes, we were in front, but obviously because we scored, it meant that Leicester had to make changes. And because Leicester made changes, we punished him and took full advantage of that. So obviously we were playing well, we were in front. And because of that, Leicester obviously made changes. And ultimately, because they made these changes, we obviously utilised that and took full advantage. But in terms of his performance, like I've already mentioned, it's not just about the goal he scored. Because if anything... His finish for the header was obviously straight at the keeper. And really, because of there was so much strength in it, it obviously it was going to go in. Because it wasn't the best header. It wasn't in the far corner or the near corner. But the fact that he put so much power on it was great. And, you know, if you look at the goal, he scored better than that in terms of headers. You know, he would normally put it far post. But because he put it near the keeper, you could argue that actually his performance was actually better than the goal he did score. But obviously, aside from the goal, I thought it was instrumental in so many Palace attacks. Obviously, setting up Zaha, Zaha's goal, he won loads of free kicks. And actually, he was one of the only men to actually put his head and actually get on the, get on some set pieces and corners. So not only was he getting on our set pieces and our corners, he was also going back and defending Leicester's set pieces and corners as well. And to be honest, on the subject of corners... Leicester had won about two or three minutes after Benteke had scored that first goal. And he was quite uh, lucky not to score an own goal um, because obviously it got cleared for danger. So obviously Benteke rose the highest out of all of the Leicester players in the box, went to head it in and luckily for us it went just wide. But to be honest, it was a great performance from him. You know, defensively he was going back and, you know, winning headers from set pieces and corners. He obviously was very physical and instrumental in our attacking moves going forward but the main thing for me really is he's made up for 
that miss against Burn uh, against uh, Bournemouth now. And to be honest, I personally think he fully deserves the eight. Obviously for his overall performance, but mainly because of the goal and the assist. But unfortunately now, after such such a great performance, he's now suspended for Swansea. Now to move on to the subs, Jara Reedwald and Bakary Sacco. So just to start off with Jara Reedwald's performance, he obviously came on for Kabai midway through the second half. Not because Kabai was having a bad game, because I've already talked about how influential he was in the game, but purely because his legs weren't doing it, he was quite tired. So fair enough, you take Kabai off and bring Jara Reedwald on. But the good perform the good reason or the good thing about that substitution is the fact that we've finally given Reedwald another chance in the first team. And actually, obviously he hasn't been on the bench recently, but I thought coming off the bench. He done a good job, obviously with us leading the game, didn't really have to do much in terms of winning the game, but you know, he came off the bench and although he came on to shore things up and you know you would expect him to have a little impact, because he came on quite late in the game, didn't really have time to make an impact. And if you look back at the game as a whole, he didn't have too much time to get on the ball, let alone affect the game. But to be honest, for me, that's the thing about his performance. Yes, Kabai didn't have a bad game, but he was a bit tired. Bring on Reed Ward when you're winning just to see what if he can do it again, just to give him another chance. And I personally think it was a great uh, thing to see him. So if you had to rate his performance, I'd probably give him a 6 out of 10. Now, Bakary Sacco obviously came off, came on for Benteke, I believe it was. Obviously, with Benteke not necessarily being back to 100% fitness yet, so bring him on. And I thought that Bakary Sacco made a good account of, of himself. And obviously, he did score the third goal, um, you know, to help us go forth with the 3-0 win. But to be honest, when he came on, obviously he's come on to not only give a bit more energy to the side, but to run down the clock. And there was quite a few times where instead of just trying to get the third goal, he'd just take the ball to the corner flag and just run the clock down. And to be honest, that was absolutely fantastic. You know, rather than doing what Antonio did against us and trying to create chances and then we get punished on the counter-attack, he was quite clever with his play in terms of we're 2 new up and we need to protect our lead. But ultimately... Yes, he took the ball to the corner flag a few times, but ultimately he did score um, the third goal because he'd done excellently, obviously, at killing the time. And, you know, he'd done that after Watford. So, obviously, Hodgson saw him do it against Watford, wanted him to do it again, and he'd done so again against Leicester. But more than that, obviously, he that one chance where he didn't take it to the corner flag, lovely counter-attack from Loftus-Cheek, great ball to Sacco, and obviously Sacco curling Weldy from the edge of the box into the top corner which really just summed up the game for Leicester and how well we played but personally for me obviously you've probably seen highlights and replays of the goal already but Sacco came off the bench yes he didn't have a massive impact in terms of changing the game and making us go forth and get another two goals but the fact that he was able to be very clever with his time and kill time and the fact that he was able to score from the counter-attack with an absolutely fantastic goal which, in my opinion, at the moment, would probably win goal of the season for Palace. You know, it, it just shows how good of a player he can be. Now, obviously, with Benteke being suspended against Swansea, you're probably going to see Bakary Sacco start. And I personally don't have a problem with that because he's, he looks much fitter now. He looks much more physical and he's, he's got a bit of pace about him. And he's going to have lots of confidence now with him having scored two goals in two games. So hopefully, in the next few games, he can get a chance to run in, in the team again. But Bakary Sacco and Reed Award, uh, two very good subs in my opinion. So now just to go over a quick summary of the game. You know, when you consider we've had no wins or no away wins this season, no away goals and no goals for Christian Benteke, there was quite a lot of pressure on him and team to finally get something away from home. And ultimately we, we did that. And there was no need for us to worry, uh, you know, before the game because we'd done that quite easily in a quite comfortable 3-0 win. But obviously three goals, obviously one from Christian Benteke, sort of just rounded off what, what was, you know, a terrific performance all round. And it just extends our unbeaten run to seven games. So that's just absolutely fantastic that, you know, in the last seven games, we haven't lost a game. And the fact that in nine games, we've only lost one game, which just shows how Roy Hodgson is slowly, slowly turning things around. And, you know, why Roy Hodgson is keeping the feet of those players firmly on the ground, he's, you know, making sure that we keep ticking on and keep, get, keep getting results and to be honest he was very criticised when he got um, got the Palace job because obviously his in the England background and Liverpool background but actually he's proven to be the perfect fit purely because he's doing the job 
you know, what was expected of, off of him. You know, people were laughing when he was appointed, but then now they're starting to see with seven games unbeaten and only, you know, one loss in nine games, we're now starting to see that actually he's starting to have an impact along with his assistant, Ray uh, Lewington. So really, the nature of this win was really impressive. The fact that we haven't won away from home all season, we hadn't scored, and then we not only go and win away from home, but we go forth and score three goals, obviously with one of them being Christian Menteke's um, you know, first of the season. And to be honest, you could be fooled by thinking this was a team higher up the table because you would never expect a team who were relegation contenders to win a game so comfortably and play so well. So really, you know, based on this performance and based on the last seven games, hopefully better things are to come. And if we do continue our form against Swansea and the games after that, and we continue to grow in confidence and grow the solidity in terms of the team, then hopefully we get out of this relegation battle. Now to move on to my Man of the Match award. But before I do that and give you my Man of the Match and why I thought I had the biggest influence in the game, I'm now going to give you the four nominations I put forward for the award. Now I did say for the game against Watford that actually you could argue that that was probably one of our worst performances of the season and it was quite hard to pick out four players other than obviously the two goal scorers and the, the guy who got the assist in Zaha so it was actually quite hard for me after that game to pick a man of the match whereas in comparison this game against Leicester where we played them off the park it was a fantastic team performance and there were good individual performances it was actually quite hard to pick a man of the match let alone a short list of four purely because as a whole you could probably argue the whole team to put on there. But the four nominations I've put forward uh, for the award, which are actually the same as what the club put on Twitter, but they are Christian Menteke, Wilfred Zaha, James McArthur and Jeffrey Slup. So just to go through why I've picked these four players and obviously what makes them better than other players, obviously Benteke, he got a goal, he got an assist, what more is there to say? Obviously his goal was a fantastically taken header, his assist was great hold up play, great pass to Wilf and overall I thought his physical play and his battle with the you know Leicester City defenders was really good in the game and although he's suspended for the game against Swansea next week it just shows in this game how good his performance was in the fact that he was not only able to get the goal but able to get the assist as well but I personally thought for main reason for me was obviously then two things but the physical battle as well was fantastic. Obviously Wilfred Zaha this guy's been fantastic all season once again in this game he was great Obviously, he got that goal. Great, lovely step over to get past the defender and, and, you know, get the shot in. But also, he was the biggest threat for Palace in terms of causing Leicester problems. So, that's one of the main reasons that I put him on there. Obviously, James McArthur, I already talked about him quite a lot in the player ratings. But he was that rock in, in front of the defence, obviously giving them protection. And not only was he energetic, but he was he played that Milivojevic role really well. So, not only was he going forward... And helping to attack but he was making sure that he won the midfield battle and he stopped you know Leicester from going forth and attacking now the final player is Jeffrey Slup you know I could have put any four of the back four here but I chose Jeffrey Slup because of how well he's improved in comparison to other games so Jeffrey Slup obviously in this game he was not only good defensively in terms of keeping the clean sheet in terms of making blocks and tackles but going forward which is something I haven't seen from him recently in this game, there were so many runs forward where he ran into the box. And obviously there was one quite early on in the game where he ran past three defenders, which is amazing for him. Used his pace to great advantage. And luckily, unluckily, no one was able to get on the end of his cross. So really, he had a fantastic defensive performance. But unlike in the last few games where he's been quite poor offensively, in this game, he proved me right. He proved me wrong, but actually put it in a decent offensive performance. Now, to be honest, when you've got a player who scored a fantastic goal, much like Zaha, you could probably argue that he deserves to win it. And that's certainly what the people on Twitter did vote for. But for me, in terms of how energetic he was in the midfield and the fact that he gave so much protection to the back four and controlled the midfield and stopped Leicester, I'm going to give the man a match to James McArthur. So congratulations, James. You don't get a trophy or certificate, but you do get my sincere congratulations on what was another solid performance from you. But that's not to say that his performance was any more or any less than any of other the four players I put here by personally four because of his work rate and how energetic he was in the game and the fact that how important he was to us winning the game I personally think that that's why he deserved the Man of the Match award but you could argue people 
like Speroni for that important save he made for Bakary Sacco for scoring an absolutely fantastic goal and lost the cheek as well. Them sort of players you could argue to be on the shortlist, but for me personally, Benteke, Zaha, MacArthur and Slup were worthy nominations for the award. So now you've heard my match report, player rankings and my man and match. That concludes this week's podcast. Now I've got an exclusive interview with Roy Hodgson, Christian Menteke and James McArthur following the game. To come to a club that is in such good form as Leicester are, it shows uh, how far we've come in recent weeks. A tremendous day for us. Yeah, I think uh, we are really in, uh, in a good shape. We are really, uh, we were really focused uh, this afternoon and uh, we really deserve uh, those, three, uh, those three points. So much is always made about the fact that we've gone so long without scoring away from home. How does it affect the players from a professional's point of view? You're just on the training ground day to day, trying to work as hard as you can. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a frustrating, uh, frustrating situation because obviously with uh, the player that we got, the fact that we, we couldn't score away was a little bit uh, yeah, a tough situation for us. But today we showed that we are a quality side and uh, we have to keep that way. And a great team performance as well. The whole team from the off, from the first whistle, just did, did a, such a professional job. Yeah, I think we were really, we were really uh, focused, and we we worked really hard. One of each, uh, one of each player on the on the field, and even the sub. So uh, it's really a well deserved uh, three point. And that goal for yourself, just talk us through it from uh, the ball over from the wing. Yeah, I think it's uh, as a striker, people ask you just to score, no matter what, and uh, this. Uh, Past weeks, I, I've been really um, frustrated about myself in terms of go, uh, scoring goals, but in terms of uh, hard work, I've been involved. And uh, today, yeah, I deserve uh, that goal, I think. Uh, and um, I'm really pleased with that. And then we built on that, didn't we? Completing the victory, obviously, right at the death. But throughout the game, I mean, Julian didn't really have too much, too many saves to make, did he? No, I think from the, the first minute, we, we've been really, like I said, focused and uh, we didn't. Uh, give them anything, maybe one shot from Maras and a great serve from Jules, otherwise we, we really control the game. And now into a busy Christmas period, but going into it in a real good run of form ourselves. Yeah, we are in a good form, but the the toughest thing in Premier League is to, to keep going and to keep winning games and to keep uh, yeah grading in the in the rankings. So we have to really be we have to enjoy it obviously because it's a big, big, big win for us, but we have to, to think about uh, the next game coming up. Christian, congratulations, thanks Thank very much. You. James, your reflections on that one, you're back in the starting eleven today, and to come to a team are in such the run of form that Leicester are, it just shows probably what a good result that was. Yeah, it was a great result, but we have been playing well, we've got getting results ourselves, so we came here with confidence and we played with confidence as well. And the noticeable thing watching there was from the off, wasn't it? We were so focused and got at them right. Didn't let them get into the game, really. Yeah, we were solid. We made sure that um, their attacking players like Mares, we tried to nullify them. And when we do a good job at the back, it gives the forward players the opportunity to go and express themselves, and they did that. And obviously today with a few injuries in the ranks, but the others that came in, you know, it shows probably the, the strength in depth that we've got there. Yeah, everyone needs to be ready, I says that after... Um, the win the other night that the players coming on for the pitch, whoever comes into the team needs to be ready and we were and um, that's important, it's a squad game, it's not um, a, a case of just 11 players. And we've been waiting for this away goal, we get three on the same day but uh, we'll take them, just uh, nice for Christian to get that one to get us underway. Yeah, he's been playing really well um, and obviously it's not falling for him in front of goal but today he was outstanding again and thankfully and glad um, for him that he's got the goal. And then adding to it with a fine finish from Wilf. Yeah, the boy's on fire, isn't he? Um, he keeps doing it every week. People are talking um, in the press conferences. Um, when I do the last one, you're talking about how good he is and he's produced again today and thankfully he's um, got another goal. With a 2-0 lead, that's always a dangerous lead in the game, isn't it? But we kept them out, obviously they had a goal disallowed, but we did keep them out and Julian really limited to the number of saves that he had to make. Yeah, but he, he produced um, a very good a very good save at a very important time. He'd done it the other night again. Um, so credit to him, he's keeping the goals out and um, it's helping us as a team. And then uh, taking us sort of after today's fixture programme, hopefully out the bottom three, and uh, it's a good confidence boost. As you say, the run's been there, hasn't it? Yeah, it's seven games now, so we need to just keep this run going. Um, when you're... When you're going through a run like this, complacency can set in and we'll make sure that it doesn't. We'll, um, 
you look at them today where maybe a bit of complacency set in, but we'll um, make sure we're on it again in training and in the next match. And from a player's perspective, just finally, what do you think has been the difference over recent weeks? Is it just there has been that sort of obviously with a new management team in working different way in training maybe? What do you put it down to? Yeah, the manager's obviously had a big impact. Um, he's made us more solid. We're uh, starting to get clean sheets now and when you're getting clean sheets and you've got the attacking prowess that we've got, then we're always going to be dangerous. Great sir. James, congratulations. Wait, congratulations. Was a performance, was a result like this on the cards? I think it was pretty much what I said to you before the game. I don't know if they've showed that interview, of course, but uh, before the game you asked me about um, away form and not scoring goals, etc., etc. But I think I said that um, the last performances in particular, we've looked very, very dangerous. We haven't taken the chances that we've created, but we've definitely created chances in all of our away matches. And uh, we've drawn 2 nil nil, and we, we've lost 2 one nil. So we've been getting closer and closer, and today... It all fell for us, you know, we had the, the defensive solidity, the two front players worked unbelievably hard to help the team defensively, but of course then they were very, very dangerous when we had the ball and uh, I'm, I'm delighted of course with the, with the victory, but I'm not that surprised because I think uh, we've been threatening to do that for quite a long time now. Talking of taking chances, what will taking that chance do for Christian Benteke, do you feel? I think it would do a lot and I think also the crowd, you know, our crowd and the support we have, which is fantastic, you know, we, we brought a lot of people here today. I think they also appreciate not just the goals, they appreciate the work rate and the fact that Christian today was working so hard in the other aspects of his game as well. And they were singing his name, which is fantastic because, of course, after missing a penalty, he, he perhaps rightly, many people would say, got some stick from the crowd. But on this occasion, that they've turned very quickly, singing his name, and that was fully deserved, I thought. On the subject of work rate, what credit do... MacArthur and Kabai deserve for their performance today in front of that back four? Yeah, excellent. I mean, I've got to say that I, I, I wouldn't criticise any aspect of our team performance today. I thought that we defended well, as the clean sheet would suggest. And in fact, that's our, that's our uh, third or third clean sheet in a row away from home. Yeah, third clean sheet away from home, uh, which is a good performance uh, by any standards. Um, but I think that the, the, the discipline in the team was just what we're looking for. The work rate was what we're looking for. And the only problem is that we can only enjoy this victory for a short while because then we've got to go again. And next week, if we don't get a result against Swansea, we're going to be disappointed again. Looking over the last few weeks, that's now 13 points from seven games. I know we're not quite even halfway through the season, but what platform at this stage do you feel you've given yourselves in the situation you're in? I think that all we've done so far, possibly, is to extricate ourselves a little bit from the from that situation we were in after seven games. You know, we no goals, <laughs> no points, uh, seven defeats. Uh, that's a, a pretty uh, bleak situation to find yourself in. But I think that the the next, how many games is it now? Next 11 games, is it? Is it? The next 11 games have at least shown that we can get points and we've at least re-established some sort of parity uh, with the rest of the teams around us. We're no longer divorced from anybody. And to be honest, before Christmas, that was our goal. You know, we thought if we can just get close enough to some of the teams around us to give ourselves a chance with a good 2018 to stay in the league, we've got a, we've got uh, some possibilities with the quality of players we have in the team. Given that he's found a bit of form and found a goal, is the only downside for the Swansea game next week the fact that you won't have Christian Venteke? He's now suspended. Yeah, we're really unlucky. I mean, today I think he was the only yellow card today, wasn't he? And... and uh, the only yellow card, or only one of two yellow cards against Watford, was against Luka Milivojevic, and he got suspended. So we've we've not been blessed with uh, where the yellow cards have fallen. But I don't quite understand how Christian Benteke, who hardly fouls anybody and doesn't do too much wrong, he's really quite a gentle giant, how he managed to get five yellow cards. I think he had three before he started playing for me. I'd like to know where they came from. So there you have it. Now you've heard what Roy Hodgson, Christian Menteke and James McArthur had to say after the game. That concludes this week's podcast for the game against Leicester City. But make sure to come back next week for my post-match review of the game against Swansea. So thanks for listening and remember to up the palace. Up the palace.